Hello. Today I wanted to put my views on display and to give you my reasons for why I think the intervention in the Gulf in 1991 was justified. Let me begin my case. We begin with the way that the war was arrived at and built up to. This was a war of finance. Saddam Hussein had just recently built up his army and he recently lost the Iran-Iraq war. The price of oil had been steeply going down, and Saddam Hussein had blamed Kuwait for this. Saddam Hussein owned about one-tenth of the world's oil, so did Kuwait. Two months earlier, Saddam Hussein had welcomed his neighbor and ally, the Emir of Kuwait. The Emir ruled one of the wealthiest countries on earth. Kuwait owned one-tenth of the world's oil. Iraq was rich in oil too, but Saddam's military spending had pushed his regime to the brink of bankruptcy. Saddam blamed the emir for his troubles, accusing Kuwait of flooding the market with cheap oil, lowering prices, and hastening Iraq's descent into economic crisis. We started to realize that there is a conspiracy against Iraq, a deliberate conspiracy against Iraq, by Kuwait, organized, devised by the United States. Later that day, Saddam would issue the emir a stark warning. He said, each dollar less in price means to us one billion in revenues for a year. If you do not mean waging a war against Iraq, please stop it. But the emir took a tough stand. And a month later, Saddam's inner circle decided that unless Kuwait handed over $10 billion to Iraq immediately, they would invade. Iraq had no choice but to act, either to be destroyed, to be suffocated and strangled inside its territory, or attack the enemy on the outside. The U.S. asked the Arabs what they thought would happen and if they thought Saddam Hussein would actually invade. They told the U.S. that no, they didn't expect him to invade, and Hazim Mubarak visited him on purpose with the goal of finding out if he was serious about this. Saddam Hussein told Hazim Mubarak that he was not serious about going in and that it was a bluff, but not to tell the Americans. Hazim Mubarak did tell the Americans, but... He told them not to worry, and that it was a bluff, and to keep it close to the vest. Well, we fast forward, the peace talks fall through, 1991, August 2nd, or I'm sorry, 1990, August 2nd. The Republican Guard was ordered to move south toward Iraq's border with Kuwait. These were the Iraqi army's elite divisions, equipped with Soviet tanks. No other Middle Eastern country except Israel had forces to rival them. Soon, 30,000 Iraqi troops had massed on the border between Iraq and Kuwait. But the Iraqi threat was still building on the Kuwaiti border. The original 30,000 troops grew to 70,000, then 100,000. Arab leaders continued to insist it was all a bluff. Then on August 1st, the Iraqis walked out on talks when the Kuwaitis refused to meet their demands. Saddam issued his orders. Republican Guard tanks sealed off the city. Saddam Hussein invades Kuwait, declares that Kuwait no longer exists. Kuwait, which was a UN nation, which was a nation a part of the Arab League, no longer exists. He annexes it, declares it the 19th or 18th province of Iraq. I received a call from, from a friend in the, in the foreign ministry, and he told me that the foreign minister said that now, and stress now, is the time for the U.S. to act. And I said to him, there may have been a time to act yesterday, there may be a time to act in the future, but I don't know what we can do right now. was shocking, 
shocking. I couldn't believe that this could happen in the Arab world. Saddam Hussein, we were very in good terms and he was a friend, we know each other very well, but didn't expect him to do that. By noon, Saddam Hussein controlled one-fifth of the world's oil. Saddam probably figured the Arab world and the world at large would bitch and moan for a couple of days, and then people would get used to it. And the world would essentially learn to live with it. And the United States, which had left Lebanon a decade before and so forth, uh, was not going to do anything. And even if the United States wanted to do something, the local Arabs would never do anything. They would never work with the United States and stand up to Saddam. So I think Saddam took the pretty intelligent decision that he could probably get away with it. To give you a concept of how malicious a player he was, let's go to the fact that in order to dissuade the Arabs from working with the U.S. in any kind of retaliation, he starts sending Scud missiles to Israel, uh, knowing the power of the Jew, and that if the Jew got involved, then all Arabs would be forced to disengage. President Bush quickly neutralizes this and asks Israel not to intervene through a long campaign of a lot of bullshit, but moving forward. What we don't know is if Saddam Hussein plans to stop there. Our intel tells us otherwise. With him controlling one-fifth of the entire world's oil supply and potentially going into Saudi Arabia to own 40% of the world's oil, that was something that we could not accept. So we were forced to deploy to protect Saudi Arabia, which I, I'm disgusted that we have to deploy for something like this. I mean, the, the first moment of an annexation, we should have been deployed. I, I, I don't understand. This is my personal view on this matter. I don't, I don't like things being based around interest. I think our only interest should be human rights and liberty. And anything else besides that can take a back seat. You can do, you know, finances, economy and stuff like that, but that shouldn't be your primary reason for doing something. You can do two things at once when you go in. Now, before I go forward, I, I want you to see how Saddam Hussein treated his own people. He was doing this to Kuwaitis now. But the treatment of his own people alone should have justified any type of intervention. This is some of the most disgusting crimes you're going to see in your life. Uh, this is ISIS 1.0. Uh, this is this is everything wrong with society that we don't stop these crimes when they occur. <laughs> 